So welcome to the next topic in mechanics, uh, we're nearly at the end of the unit, it is projectile motion. So what are we going to learn in the next week or so? We're going to have an introduction on what projectile motion is, relating it back to the uh, previous mechanics we've done in this unit. Uh, we're going to discuss gravity, again something you should now be familiar with, and projectile motion, uh, is which we're going to eventually end up at leading at. And in particular, projectile motion calculation summaries, so how to calculate using the projectile motion equations. And finally, projectile motion at an angle, that some of you may have been doing in sports science. Okay, so the introduction is that all projectile motion is caused by the effect of a force. And this force we know as the force of gravity. So gravity was first understood and explained by the great Isaac Newton lived in the 17th century. Wasn't a particularly nice man, but still he introduced us to the idea of gravity. And that's a story involved in apples and people with apples landing on their heads. And there's a picture of the man, very cantankerous old fart, but still, there he is. So Newton proposed that gravity is produced due to the interaction between an object, which if you continue on in physics, be more about in level three and the effect of gravity on an object moving is that it causes a parabolic trajectory. Gravity is unlike any other force as it is attractive. Okay so think of electromagnetic force or ma uh, magnetic force you have uh, attraction but also you can have repelling of magnets. Uh, all other forces are either attractive or repulsive. Can be either Right, so acceleration due to gravity is a constant, as we've discovered in this unit, and around at least on Earth, and is known to have a value of 9.81 meters per second per second. Uh, we tend to round that to 10 meters per second per second. So an object, what that actually means is an object dropped from a height will accelerate straight down at 10 meters per second per second until it reaches terminal velocity, uh, which we've already discussed previously in the unit. So using the kinematic equations that we've already learnt, uh, we're able to solve many problems that involve gravity because we have an acceleration of 10, which we can use. So here's an example here of a ball falling off a table, for instance. There we go, it falls. And you can kind of mimic the motion. You can see that the initial velocity is always zero when it falls off. Acceleration is 9.81 meters per second per second down towards the ground. Uh, the distance can be calculated using the kinetic equations and also the velocity final and velocity initial uh, can be elucidated from these equations as well, illustrating the power of the equations that we've already learned. So by using the calculation formulas that we've already got, the kinematic equations, we can calculate uh, the final velocity of that ball as it falls from a height of that table, assuming that the initial velocity is zero. Okay, so let's look at an example. So say um, Donald Trump, who's initially stationary, is dropped from a cliff 50 meters above the sea. So look at it in three parts. Question A says, how far will Donald Trump fall in a second? Question B will say, how far will Donald Trump fall in two seconds? And question C says, well, how long will it take until he hits the ocean, breaks his neck, and floats off? So here's a diagram of that where I've stylized the Donald. It's a blue dot. And you can see he falls down the cliff into the ocean, breaking his neck. Distance is 50 meters. And the force of associated with gravity or the acceleration associated with gravity is 10 meters per second per second acceleration due to gravity. So I want you to pause the video now and try and work out parts A, B, and C. And I'll get back to you in five seconds and uh, with the answers and see if they match mine. Okay, so welcome back. So for A and B, a velocity time graph can be used. Acceleration of 10 meters per second per second downward means that Dr. Donald 
Velocity increases 10 meters per second every second. You can see this by a uh, velocity time graph. So you can see that for every second, Donald's velocity is increasing by 10 meters per second. <coughs> so for one second, the area under the graph will equal the distance, which we already know from previously in the unit. And the area under a graph, a velocity time graph, is going to be the distance. So for d in one second, it will be half times 1 times 10, half base times height, which remember it's a triangle. So Donald will fall around about 5 metres in the first second. And then Mr. Trump, two seconds later, will have fallen 20, 20 metres. Times the 2 seconds times 20 this time. So a kinematic equation can then be used to find the time t. Uh, since the acceleration of the rock, or in this case Donald Trump, is 10 metres per second per second, the initial velocity, because Donald was dropped uh, without any initial velocity, so it was zero, because he's stationary until he gets pushed off, and these values can be substituted into the equation. And so d equals vi times t plus half a t squared, which you're familiar with um, from previously in the unit. And therefore, plugging the numbers in, 50 equals 0 times t plus half times 10 times t squared. Remember that 50 is the distance that Donald will fall until he hits the ocean. And rearranging that, t squared equals 50 divided by 5, or 10. So t equals square root of 10. So around about 3.2 seconds until Mr. Trump hits the ocean floor, or hits the ocean surface, sorry, uh, breaking his neck. Right, so after dealing with the tragic death of Donald Trump, let's move on to a second example. <clears throat> um, so you're out on the um, yard, and uh, you've, got a, you've got your basketball, you throw it upwards with an initial speed of 20 metres per second. Uh, so I want you to draw the velocity time graph of the motion. Um, how far does it rise in one second? How long does it take to reach its highest point above the yard? And also how high above the ground? What's the distance? Um, at this highest point of its motion. So looking at the diagram, you have your basketball from the ground, right up into the air, comes back down. So the velocity initial will be 20 meters per second. The acceleration is 10 meters per second per second. And distance divided by time will equal what? Okay. So pause the video now. Write down what you think uh, the answers are, and I'll come back in five seconds and we'll hopefully have a solution for you. Okay, so welcome back. I'm just going to go through the solution, and you're going to check it against your own and see if you're on the right track. <clears throat> okay, so first thing is the velocity time graph, which you've sketched for the motion. Okay, now you notice with the velocity time graph that the slope is now negative, okay? So it starts off with an upward velocity of 20, but as it goes up, it decelerates due to the force of gravity acting on the basketball. Okay, so the slope is now negative, not positive. This is important, okay? The height risen in one second, of course, equals the area under the graph, as we have learned previously, not only in this lesson, but previously in the unit. So the area equals half times 20 plus 10 times 1 from the graph. The area is 15 metres in one second. And at the highest point, the ball is, ball is momentarily stationary. It's stopped because gravity, force of gravity um, is equal to the support force. And it starts to move downward again. At this moment, the initial velocity on the velocity is zero, and this occurs at t equals two seconds, as you can see from the graph. Yeah, right. Yeah, done. Right, and finally, the highest position at t equals two seconds. This is the height of the area under the graph up to two seconds. Okay, so this is this area here. Here we go. 
So we'll clear all that. So the area equals half times 20 times 2. See, half times 20 times 2. This is area. And this equals the maximum height that ball makes above the arc. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the real crux of this, um, this lesson. Projectile motion. We're going to apply what we've just gone through in terms of vertical motion and now move on to including and incorporating horizontal motion, which is projectile motion. So any object that moves through the air without its own source of power, for example, bullets, shot puts, netball, pull on Trump, um, undergoes projectile motion. <clears throat> okay, so it has two major components. It has the vertical component, or the Y component, and of course the X component, which is your horizontal component. Okay, and the sum of those two will give the motion of the object, the resultant. So again, we're looking at trigonometry here, aren't we? Okay, so the Y component plus the X component equals the resultant using Pythagoras' theorem. So the vertical motion, the Y component, changes due to the effect of gravity. Okay, so it's good. depending on what the question says, it could either be 10 meters per second or 9.8 meters per second, but how something moves up and down in the Y direction will depend on gravity. And the horizontal motion, okay, um, remains constant as the horizontal component is not undergoing any effect due to gravity. Okay, there's no unbalanced gravity force working on the X component, only the Y component. So for level two, air resistance can be ignored. You can assume there's no air resistance. Okay. So here's a diagram illustrating the uh, movement of a tennis ball. So the vertical component, which is thing, this component here, okay, up and down here, gravity acts upon the object, changing its velocity at 9.8 meters per second. <clears throat> okay, that's only in the y direction, okay, only in this direction. And the horizontal component, which is this direction here and here has no effect of gravity on it okay so it still remains it's positive um, or still remains at a constant velocity so initial velocity because it's not affected by any force okay so the resultant of the horizontal and vertical vectors is known as a parabolic trajectory which you may have seen if you um, fire off cannons or you play something called angry birds that is, a bird in Angry Birds, he moves in a parabolic direction. Okay, so <clears throat> let's look at some projectile motion calculations. So draw a diagram to represent all the information that you have now been given. So here's a parabola. Okay, so draw, the first thing you have to do is draw the projectile motion arc, which is illustrated now here. Okay. And then you put in the x and y components, okay? And this is going to be the resultant, resultant from the x and y components using Pythagoras. <coughs> and place the Vf equals zero vertical value, okay? Place on the Vf equals zero the vertical value. <coughs> because at its peak, here, V, F will equal zero. Just like with the basketball, it reaches a maximum, the velocity goes back down to zero, and then starts to accelerate downwards again due to gravity. And then we've got some timelines. Okay, so that's the amount of time it takes for the ball, or whatever the old projectile is, to move in the here until it lands again back onto Earth with a thud. And the range line is calculated using the horizontal values only. Okay, so what's that saying is that the range, a 
Okay, so this is this is the range here. This part here, that's the range. <clears throat> okay, to calculate that, you only use the x, not the y, not the y. That's the important thing. Okay. So velocity, of course, as we know, equals distance over time. So you have a, a amount of time it takes here, so we know distance, so you can work out the final velocity. Okay. So if you have a resultant velocity, i.e. the speed of the angle, then you can calculate the y component, just like previously for mechanics through if you know the hypotenuse and the adjacent, you can calculate y. And if you know the x component, if you know the hypotenuse and the opposite, you can calculate. Okay, so the initial from Sokar Toa is cosine theta times the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine theta times the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Just like the other uh, mechanics question. Okay, so how do you find the maximum height of flight? All of these have been resolved vertically. Okay, so finding the y component, uh, velocity, initial velocity, at the maximum height, the velocity is going to be zero. B is equal to zero. Acceleration is constant because it's acceleration due to gravity, which will be 9.8 meters per second. The distance of the un is unknown. D, <coughs> you can find out because zero equals the initial velocity plus 2ad, and by rearranging the equation, you can find d. So how do you find the time of flight? Again, you resolve vertically. You know the um, vi. You've been given that in the question. You know that vf will equal zero. You know that the acceleration again due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second. And you use vf equals vi plus at. Usually, if vi and vf are going to be zero, then it will just be Bf equals at. And rearranging to find t, this time is the time for half the flight. So the total flight time will just be simply doubling this number. Okay, so because uh, the t you find is what the time it takes to get its maximum <coughs> height, and then you've got to go back down to Earth. And find the range, you need to resolve horizontally this time using v divided by t. You need to have a full flight time t, and you need to find the initial horizontal velocity, which is the x component. And remember that the y component is going to be your vertical component. And rearrange the formula to make the subject and solve. So the final example, which we're going to work through, is a soccer player hits a ball. The initial component's velocity of the ball are 10 meters per second vertically and 20 meters per second horizontally. <coughs> Of the ball. So here's an example here. You've got the ball being kicked off okay, towards the goal, and you're going to work out the range of the ball, how far it has traveled. Okay, so it's about there. You've got to work out pretty much T. Okay. Oh, there it is there. There. And also the time. How do we work out what the time is? And also the time of its maximum height. When its uh, velocity is zero. So pause the video now and work out the next five seconds or so once I come back. Hopefully you've got the same answer as I have. Right, so at maximum height, the initial vertical speed is 10 meters per second from the question, and it would have gone back to zero at maximum height, as we know, as all the forces begin to balance. So Vf equals Vi plus At, we can make an equation which you're already familiar with. So zero plus 10 plus minus 10 times T will therefore give you T, if you rearrange the equation, of equaling one second. Okay, so. At one, after one second, it would have reached its maximum height. Okay, that means it takes two seconds to go back to Earth. There we go. 
The ball travels horizontally at a constant speed of 20 meters per second for two seconds. Because, remember, that the horizontal is not being affected by gravity. Thus, the range will simply be d times equals v times t and 20 times 2. Okay. So another example, how high does a softball rise if it is hit with an initial speed of 40 meters per second at an angle of 40 degrees to the ground? So we might do some training. Okay, so here's a diagram here. You've got the ball, it's going to be kicked, or well, the softball is going to be hit 40 degrees above the ground. And you've got to work out um, how high it goes at its maximum height. Okay, what's the maximum height at VF equals zero? So again, pause the video now, and in five seconds later, we'll come back and we'll see if you've got the right answer. Okay, so welcome back. So the initial vertical speed is 40 sine 40 degrees. Okay, remembering Sokar Toa. Therefore, it's going to be 25.7 meters per second. So at the maximum height, <coughs> the vertical speed will have reduced from 25 meters per second, meters per second to zero. That's the vertical speed that's being acted on by gravity. Okay, the relevant kinetic equation this time does not involve time. You've got your head, you know, your, your final velocity is going to be zero. You know, your initial velocity, because we just worked it out, 25.7, and you know the acceleration is due to gravity is 9.8. So that means that zero equals 25.7 squared plus 2 times negative 10 times d. You rearrange to find d, so d. 